Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. This week we're looking at the last major piece of equipment from our last China trip. This is an industrial reflow hot plate. It's a lot like a hot plate you use for cooking, but it has a bigger mass on top and it's designed specifically for reflowing components on circuit boards. You put a board on top that has components and solder paste already placed, and the board heats up the reflow temperature. A lot of people prefer the hot plate to a reflow oven because you can see the parts and you can fix little problems as they happen. A lot of people also find a lot more consistent results from a hot plate than from a reflow oven. We haven't had a lot of experience with the hot plate yet. For our one-offs, the reflow oven has worked really, really well so far. But today we're going to check out the hot plate using Shock's RGB controller board, the same one that we refloated in the oven last time. We applied the solder paste to the board using the pneumatic solder paste dispenser. We went over this a few weeks ago in a workshop video. Another way to do it though is use a stencil. We got this stencil and these Buzz Pirate PCBs from Mitch and Hakvana. He's actually resident in Shenzhen and is making boards and stencils. I don't use stencils a lot because most of what we do are one-offs and a stencil at 10, 15, or 20 dollars, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're just doing one board. But if you're doing a workshop or you're planning to do 10 or 20 boards, then having the ability just to swipe the solder paste on is a lot easier than applying it by hand or with a pneumatic dispenser. Usually when you're using a silk screen, you'll have a big frame and a press that holds it down onto the PCBs. That's a whole lot of gear. It's quite expensive, bulky, and heavy. An alternative to all that rigging is the Stencilate system. This was designed by Zach Hoken, and this particular board came from a tindy done by Arachnid Labs. It's an aluminum plate with a grid of holes. And into those holes, we put little pins. And when you have your stencil made, you have holes put in the edges of the stencil. We didn't have that done, so we'll do this in a future order. And also when you have your PCBs made, you panelize them and add some extra around the edges that fits onto these pins. So you put a panel of PCBs down, you put the solder paste stencil on top of it, the pegs go right in the holes in the PCB and the stencil, lining everything up properly. Then you just put down some paste, use your spreader to spread it on, pop everything back off. But for our one-offs, we still like the pneumatic solder paste dispenser. Any more than that, a system like this is essential. One of the disadvantages of the hot plate over the reflow oven is it's harder to use a controlled temperature curve. And those controlled curves are what ensures the solder and the flux work properly to reposition parts that are misaligned and really to spread apart and not make shorts. You can emulate that a little bit by starting at a medium temperature, putting your board on, cranking it up, and then once it reaches that temperature, letting it gradually come down. But that's a lot more work than the set it and forget it sort of nature of the reflow oven. So let's get to it. We will turn this on. The temperature is adjusted digitally in the front. I push the star button. It shows us the set temperature. This is 180 degrees Celsius. When it reaches 180, we'll put the board on top and then crank the temperature up to 240 degrees until the solder reflows and everything positions. We're testing with this board because it has a variety of components in different sizes. It's got a big power jack, a few big FETs, but it also has some small 0603 components and case A capacitors. So the reflow plate has come up to 180 degrees Celsius. This is basically the, the initial temperature of the reflow oven too. So I'm going to put the board down, let it heat up for a second, and then I'll adjust the temperature up to 240 to actually reflow the solder and solder the parts to the board. Unmelted solder paste looks gray. Once it reflows, it turns shiny silver, and that's when you know it's done. So a little bit around the power jack that's not melted yet, but the FETs over here have already reflowed, as well as the smaller 0603 parts. We're only at 230 already, but everything seems to be reflowed nicely. I think we could switch it off now, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to 240 and then just shut it off. I'm going to give the board 10 minutes to cool down before we pull it off and take a look at it. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to pop off the board. Pick it up by the jack. It's still quite hot. We probably shouldn't have left it on for so long. You can see also, compared to the reflow oven, we scorched the board a bit and made it pretty brown. But the parts are on there. And for a one-off prototype, it's great. I think much like the oven, the reflow plate's running a little hotter than the temperature says. Here we had to crank the temperature profile down a bit to stop scorching boards. Also, we left the board on here a little while long. I think if you're actually doing batches of boards, you'd move it off quite a bit quicker. But overall, great result and all the parts are soldered on firmly, went very well. At 50 bucks, it's way cheaper than the $220, $250 reflow oven. And it takes up a lot less room in your workspace. It's not as automated, but you can see the parts and adjust them. I think personally, for one-offs, 
I'm just gonna stick with the reflow oven. It's set it or forget it, you put the boards in, you start the profile, it goes, it works. No worrying about it, no exposed heat. But for small labs, I could definitely see the value of the hot plate. And I know a lot of people prefer it over the reflow oven. Well, that's it for the next few weeks. Thank you for watching. I'll be in Shenzhen all next month, sourcing parts for the Buzz Pirate Educational Kit and a few other projects. I'll be posting live on the blog every day about my experience working in the market, sourcing parts, and getting new projects out. Thank you for watching. See you soon.